Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. <laughs> it's, a, it's our first uh, congress for us, but the project is doesn't have uh, a lot of time, so <laughs> we didn't have the the chance. Uh, my name is Ismael, and he's Alfredo. I'm Alfredo, yes. I'm doing the first part of the presentation, and he's uh, after me. Okay. Uh, this is um, what we want to present today. Uh, who we are, a bit of the history, our philosophy, what we already have in the first version of Telos HDL, and the new features we are working on in the Telos HDL second version. So, the project started with Carlos, who is among us, and me, Ismael. And uh, some months ago, uh, Alfredo joined us. So he helped a lot <laughs> in the last month. Uh, okay. At the beginning, we started more or less like a year and a half ago, and we started with homemade scripts, Carlos and me, because we, we've been working for two years or maybe a bit more with GSDL and VUnit. So with the scripts uh, started to grow, we decided to move to another platform. So, so we started using Atom, and we decided to to develop the first version of Teros HDL. So we made an Atom plugin and a Python backend. Really small, smaller at the beginning. So we decided to create also a LinkedIn page and a website, and we published the, the project on, on GitHub in order to get some visibility. And some months ago, we started to, to work in the second version of Telos HDL, and we changed a lot of things. We started with uh, we started splitting uh, the repositories and the responsibilities of the repositories. Okay. Uh, our philosophy with the with the software uh, has been to put a, like a graphical interface to all the suites we are using in our our work in our, in our work. So our philosophy is to not not to be intrusive. So everybody could uh, um, take uh, a repository from the internet and use the the software without any change in the in the code. We also wanted to close the gap between the software tools and the hardware tools you, we use almost every day. And we also want to integrate all the tools we, we were using, like VUnit, Coco TV, and Italize more recently. And we wanted to support all the simulators we wanted to use in, in our work, but also to extend the, the support for any simulators we can, because in that way, the software could be more interesting for other people. And we also think in the software, like something that could be used uh, for everybody. I mean, if uh, someone who wants to start with FPGA development uh, could use the software without knowing a lot from simulators or the tools. So we want it to be easy to use. In the first version of the of the software, uh, we use mainly VUnit, Linux, uh, VSDL, and we put everything together in a graphical interface. That's the the main the main idea. And we had uh, two repositories. The Atom plugin and the backend. In the second version of the of the tool, we have changed a lot of things. For example, the backend repository will be deprecated for the next version. Theros uh, HDL for the Atom plugin will be the same, but we is 
is evolving a lot. And we created Colibri and Triel, that are repositories for the backend. And we rebuilt all the, the architecture. And also, we have been working on a lot in the dependencies because it was a bit difficult to install the, the software in the first version. This is the outline of the new architecture. So in the top of the slides, we have Theros HDL, which is already er, well, now is ready for Atom, but it could be extended to other editors like Visual Code in the future. And the second part is Colibri, that it did, that will be the same for all the editors, and Triel, the Python who is managing the, the simulators and, and the suite, and that will be remain also. <coughs> okay, some of the features that we have been working on in the editor are the test bench templates. Mm, this means that you can uh, pick any module you are working on and with just a couple of clicks, uh, generate a, a basic test bench of almost any module with the inputs and the outputs, and the, the test will will pass. But it's just a, a small example to start working on. Uh, this feature is the same in the more or less the same in the first version and the second. You can uh, take a module and generate components, signals, or instance. It's just um, like for for automate the the code generation and improve the the development velocity. Uh, the documentation is looks great now <laughs> because we have worked a lot. Here we have uh, eliminated some dependencies, so now we can generate a full document and can be exported also to many formats. The state machine is <laughs> in early stage development because we have to improve a lot, but we have in mind that in the future we will be able to generate a state machine uh, diagrams for VHDL and Verilog. And we have something that works now, but we have to improve a lot. Uh, we have also added linters. And we will support, uh, we have in mind to support GHDL, Icarus, ModelSim, and Verilator. And some of them are working already. And the structure view is pretty common in many other tools, in, especially in high-level languages, but it's not common in VHDL. So we put in the editor, and it's very useful to navigate inside a module and to search signal, process, const constants. Okay. okay. Now I'm going to talk about the testing part of the program. Um, uh, from Tiro's HDL, we can run tests with Idalize, Cocoa TV, and VUnit in a really simple manner. Um, the only thing that we have to do is to go to the test manager to select the sources of the test bench, uh, select the, the suite, Idalize, Cocoa TV, of VUnit, and select the simulator and write down any parameter that we need for this uh, specific test. And we run it. Um, it's a really intrusive, it's a really non-intrusive approach because um, you can select uh, any file in any uh, in any point of the of the file system. It doesn't matter your your further structure, so it's uh, really non-intrusive. It's one of the our main goals, and of course you can save and import uh, test configurations from one project to another, for example. And when you run a test, uh, when you run a test, sorry, um, it appears a um, test summary panel with a common interface for all these suites. 
that is uh, really interesting. And uh, you can see the, the number of uh, tests executed, the number of tests failed, and a lot of information. Uh, for each um, test, you can access to the output, you can see the, the execution time, and even you can um, launch GTK wave with the uh, wave file um, generated by the simulation by uh, pressing the, the blue button with GTK wave and just uh, open. Um, uh, right now, we, we have integrated uh, these three suites and we have tested uh, these three simulators. But for example, we think that we can uh, test um, all the simulators that Idealize supports because it's uh, really simple to, to test this as uh, we are just, um, uh, we have done the, the integration with Idealize. So it's just testing the others simulators. Uh, well, uh, how it works? Well, uh, my mate Ismael talked uh, about the architecture. Uh, focusing in the testing part, um, we have created a, a new backend library written in Python. And this, uh, this library wraps each, um, each uh, suite, so could be the unit and, and idealize, and um, becomes a simulation server. How it works, the client, which is the Teros HDL, uh, just pass the, the, um, the arguments of the test, just pass the, the sources, the parameters, all the information to this, uh, to this library. And this library um, calls the suite, get the, the result, and send the information back to the client. Uh, with this approach, we have some uh, important uh, features. For example, we can, as we are centralizing all the tests, we can generate some metrics, and uh, we can move the simulation from remote to from local to remote. Uh, for example, uh, we can um, we can have a, we can have a, one developer working in local and testing with with uh, some test. And other on the other hand, we can have a, a company with a lot of developers, the same working in the same project with the, the same configuration, and uh, we can we can uh, put a lot of these simulation servers, and uh, have a, a load balance system with a queue system, and for example, we can put Shrewel uh, inside in a Docker, and the company can uh, raise uh, multiple dockers when the, the number of, uh, of tests are, are so high that we need a lot of uh, machines working in the, same, in the same simulations. And well, uh, that's uh, what we are working. Our, our plan right now is to release the, this version at the end, by the end of the year, maybe in the, in the early next year. And we have a lot of interesting things in our backlog. For example, we, we, have, we want to, to do this uh, Visual Studio Code plugin. And uh, we, we do as much as we, as we can. Um, and uh, we hope that this, uh, this project uh, could have a, a very um, interesting uh, receipt by the community. And that's all for, from our site. And I think it's time for some questions, yes. First of all, very cool project. I'm not usually an IDE guy, but this looks like something I would need to look up. Also, I wonder if you have seen that uh, there's we just pull requests this week for to add VUnit as an idealized backend. Yeah, I, I've seen it. <laughs> Yeah, the thing is that we have uh, already, well, we have worked with VUnit for more than two years, and the first version was focused only on using VUnit. So it's like something we have already done from the first version. So we will see how uh, evolution the, the pull request, but <laughs> yeah, we will check it, sure. Hi guys, nice project. Um, how are you doing the Verilog FSM extraction? Is he using like Yosis or something? Or? 
if, if we are using uses, no, not really. How are you doing the Verilog FSM extraction? You, like, how are you parsing the code and then figuring out what the state machine is doing to then generate the diagrams? Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't support everything. Also, let's see. Uh, sometimes we have to do a specific uh, commands for every simulator. So at the beginning, we are focused on uh, supporting GSDL and Icarus. But we we ha we will have to work uh, to get uh, all the functionality for all the simulators. So uh, in Colibri, we have put some commands that we need to open the the diagrams of the simulators. As what are you referring to? The, the state machine diagrams. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a hard thing, yeah. We have a parcel, we are working on it, but it's not complete. So it will take time, the state machines. <laughs> so we have, we can show you after the, the conf after the conference in, in the table, we have uh, some pieces to do some demos. So we can see it, but it's an, uh, in an early stage. <laughs> So, so you may have just answered my question, but I'm wondering how much of the structure of the, the uh, HDL your ID actually understands. Would it be possible to, say, like trace to a driver of a signal or have the ID, you know, suggest, uh, you know, struct fields for me or something like that? Okay. It's, it's it's, I'm not sure really. It's not the a part uh, I've been working on. So we can discuss with Carlos uh, later if you don't mind. It's okay for you. Uh, very simple question. Um, can I get this on the Mac? Sorry? 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 Does, do you support Macintosh? <laughs> Yeah, that's something we, we've been asked uh, some weeks ago. And at the beginning, we, we didn't consider Mac uh, at all. <laughs> and we, we first developed for Linux. Uh, later, we test the support for Windows. Uh, we are not Windows users mainly. So we have to test it just to check if it works on Windows. But uh, as as long as we know, it should work for Mac. Yes, <laughs> and we we change. Uh, I guess that there is a branch open for Mac support uh, in, on the, with the first version of Teros HDL. Uh, I saw VS support on your uh, timeline. Is that Visual Studio Code support? Or? Yes. Yes. So. What will that provide? Does that mean you, you support Visual Code extensions, or you are supporting Visual Code via an extension? Well, uh, and the the Teros HDL is uh, just a plugin for the uh, I, I don't know how to say that. Like the top repository is a plugin for Atom, and it could be totally replaced uh, to Visual Studio Code. But it's not something that we have started, so we will plan to we we plan to to do it, but we don't know when because we have a lot of work to do before. But the other repositories should be the same, so we can use in the future. We we will be able to use the same tools for different editors. One last question. I think that that's the main effort they did from version one to version two. Version one was just an Atom plugin. They have a lot of things, but you did need Atom because they used a lot of guy GUI features from Atom, and they have just split it in a smaller module so it's possible for other contributors to do the the high wrapper for any other Visual Studio. And I, of course, I would like to 
help them with that because I'm using Visual Studio, so right now it's not useful for me. Yeah, that's right. That at the beginning we were uh, people used to to develop for FPGA, so we had to change our language <laughs> a bit. Uh, and at the beginning the code was ugly. So <laughs> for the next version we we have started almost from scratch, and we separated repositories and everything. So the code is much more clean now. <laughs> okay, and let's thank the speakers again.